We welcome you into the Braves Vision postgame show following Bradley Volleyball's four-set win over Missouri State, a win that put them in the win column in Missouri Valley Conference play now 5-8 and eight and 1-1 one and one in the conference. I'm Joey Wright, joined by Nicole Pfaff and Ben Line Newman. And guys, a lot to break down from Bradley's win tonight. Nicole, we'll start with you. You were the ESPN Plus sideline reporter tonight, so you got a pretty good view of the action. Your takeaways from Bradley's four-set win. Yeah, so Bradley started off pretty strong. Second set was a little bit rough, but they definitely came back in the third and the fourth sets. Um, I really think they could have used a lot of work on the blocking, which we can get into a little bit later. And uh, they did definitely improve a lot more on that as the third and fourth sets came around. Hannah Thompson did absolutely wonderful with her kills. I mean, her approach was beautiful. Her hits were just, they were in the right spots. And whenever Bradley can find them, they find the spots. And it's absolutely wonderful. You know, the player of the game tonight was uh, Haley Do Haley Dilliker, and she did a great job being able to get her the ball to her teammates for a nice uh, kill. Dilliker led the Braves with 30 assists, notable because Bradley missing Hannah Angeli tonight due to injury. Dilliker really stepped up and led the Braves in that category in a big way. So, Nicole, talking about blocking, I know uh, you. we were talking about this before we went on the air. What, what did you see specifically in regard to the Braves blocking tonight? So the second set is when a majority of their blocking kind of went downhill. Um, what happened was we saw a lot of the balls going out of bounds, and that's because their hands were flat up against the ball. And when you want to block, you want to make sure that your hands are kind of rotated and shaping the ball, kind of like you're setting, but not really. Um, that way it kind of stops it from actually going out and decreases the surface space. Uh, ben, anything to add in regard to the Braves blocking? Yeah, tonight I was really impressed with their blocking. Um, they did a really great job of blocking the attacks right away as they came over the net. Uh, it's something I was very impressed with tonight. Sure. Ben and I had a chance to catch up with Haley Delicker following the Braves win, and here's what Delicker had to say about her performance, the team's performance, and more. Joined now on the set by Bradley sophomore Haley Delicker. And Haley, first of all, 30 assists tonight, led the team by quite a bit. Congratulations on a Thank great you. match. Thank you. Thanks. So tonight represented Bradley's first conference win of the season. And looking at the weekend as a whole, I know last night a wild match against Southern mm -hmm. Illinois, two long uh, lightning delays. Tonight you guys were able to just kind of come out, find a rhythm, and, and, and get into the win column. Talk about the weekend as a whole a little bit. Yeah, last night against SIU we did a lot of great things. Uh, we just came up a little short, and today we had the mentality to just focus on our side of the court and just play as a team, play for fun, and that's what we did, and we had a good outcome. Sure. Yeah. Now, recently you lost your top assist leader in Hannah Angeli. How important was it for you to go out and rack up the amount of assists that you did tonight? It was really important for us as a team to play for her, and she has been such a great leader to me, so I really knew what to do on the court because of her. So. Sure. You guys were picked uh, in the preseason to finish third in the Missouri Valley Conference. Looking at where you guys are at right now, obviously, an even 500 in conference play through two games. I don't, t you know, take that with a grain of salt, if you will. But do you guys feel like you're ahead of where you were last season, behind where you were last season, a team that finished with over 20 wins? It's hard to say where we're at because it's so early in the season, but I think we're in a good place for the start of the season. We had a tough preseason, but it really prepared us more than last year to go into conference fe feeling more confident in what we can do. Now, so far this year, you guys have had a rough start to the season, but tonight you guys had a very impressive win. What do you guys plan on doing to try to get on a roll uh, with the rest of the season? I think it's really important for us to just play, go out there and play, and really focus on what we need to do and not worry so much about who we're playing. Uh, one of the big talking points regarding the team this season has been consistency. Do you guys feel like you're, you're making gains in terms of establishing a more consistent rhythm? Of course, tonight you guys looked like you found that level of consistency, but do you feel like you guys are making gains in that right direction? Yes, we're definitely working on our consistency, and I think everyone coming in and out of the game, it's giving everyone great experience so that anyone can come in at any point point and make a difference. Sure. Now you have two games coming up this week with Indiana State and uh, Illinois State. What do you guys 
are, what are you guys planning on doing to prepare for those matches? You know, we always prepare by watching them and how they play, but really we have to focus on our mentality and what we need to do to pre prepare ourselves for the game. So not focusing on what they do, but focusing on our mentality and that it's all on our side of the court. Sure. Moving beyond some of the matchups specifically, personal question, what do you do to get ready for a match? What, what is your pregame routine like? How do you get ready to go out to, to battle? Mm -hmm. So a lot of us dance in the locker room. <laughs> so we always have the music bumping, and that's kind of how I prepare and get loose and not stress out so much. So that's how I kind of get ready. Now, I'm aware that you're from Rockford, Michigan, mm -hmm. and I'm also actually from Rockford, Michigan. Oh, cool. So <laughs> uh, how does it feel to be able to you know, represent the Grand Rapids area here at Bradley? It's, it's awesome. Um, it's really important for me that I'm playing here because it shows everyone from my hometown, like players from my high school and players from my club, that they can do whatever they want to do. Awesome. If I may ask, how far away is the Grand Rapids area away from Lansing? Is it? Uh, I'd say about like an hour and a half. It's about an hour. Hour and yeah. a half. I only asked because I lived in Lansing for a few years oh, nice. when I was younger. Both my brothers were born there. So. Oh, really? That's cool. <laughs> so cool. The Michigan reunion here on the set yeah. of the <laughs> Braves Vision post game show. Yeah. Well, and then one more question I have. Uh, talk a little bit about your service song and what went into choosing that and, oh, yeah. and everything associated with that. Uh, so my surf song is called um, Lose Control by Missy Elliott. And it's super fun. The first part is like super like upbeat and fun and it kind of makes me dance. So I was like, should I have it or should I have someone else do it so I can dance to it? So that was kind of what I sure. yeah, thought. <laughs> That was our player of the game, Haley Deliker. Came out with 30 assists tonight, as we've mentioned. Key for the Braves in the absence of Hannah Angeles. So, Ben, I want to turn to you now. And this came up in our interview with Hannah a little bit, but looking forward for the Braves, some big matches coming up in the next week. How can we expect the Braves to fare as we move into the next portion of Missouri Valley Conference play? Well, yeah, Joey. Well, the Braves go on the road for Monday's game against Indiana State. Now, Indiana State was projected to go be towards the bottom of the Missouri Valley Conference this year. And so far, they've kind of proven that with not a great record. So I think that the Braves can do a great job at really playing team volleyball and getting their attacks in, getting their assists in, and having a good game there. And then on Friday is another home game against Illinois State. Now this one's going to be a little bit tougher as Illinois State is projected to be second at the end of the rankings and Bradley's projected third. So this is, should be a very close matchup between two fiery teams. And of course, Bradley against Illinois State last season, a defeated Illinois State here at Renaissance Coliseum. Electric atmosphere that night, and Nicole, I can only imagine the atmosphere will be rocking come Friday night. Oh yeah, especially after this game, a uh, good comeback from last night after two weather delays and then losing 3 and 0. It will definitely be a great comeback. I think the team has a the potential of uh, moving up in the conference. And Ben, it also came up in our interview with Haley that Bradley seems to have found some measure of consistency. Haley really pleased with the direction Bradley's moving in in that regard. So I'll ask you the same question I asked her. Has Bradley made gains in finding a measure of consistency now two games into Valley play? I think they are starting to make gains. However, I think they need to prove a little bit more to really see if there is consistency being one-on-one -on -one conference right now and not having a great start to the season so far. So I believe that if they can find consistency and really get on a roll, they can really prove all the doubters wrong. Absolutely. Well, that'll about do us here on the Braves Vision postgame show following Bradley's four-set win against Missouri State. Bradley back in action here at Renaissance Coliseum next on Friday as the Braves host Illinois State. Should be a fun one. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you then.